browser extension for Home Assistant? You betcha. Before we get started with the content, if you could just take a second or two and hit that subscribe button, that would be much appreciated. It helps the channel grow and it helps me justify what I'm doing here. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is this extension for Chrome and Firefox written by Boca Boris here that just allows you to display your a, a few components, a few cards inside your browser. And it's super simple to install. All you have to do is go to your Chrome or Firefox web store and just install it. So I'll just click on it here. You can click on it right from the link. I'll click on the Chrome web store and then it's just the home assistant app and, it, app and it asks me to add to Chrome. And I'm going to do that here. So we'll like add the extension and it's already added. So in Chrome, unlike Firefox, you actually have to pin it to the browser. So we're going to go ahead down here and we're going to pin this by clicking that button here to the browser so that it always stays up here. Now, the first time you click it, it's not going to do anything because there's no, uh, no configuration for the extension. So we're going to open the options and we're going to add a URL here. And then we're going to adjust the height and the width, but I'm getting ahead of myself because what you need to do first is you need to create a card or just basically a view in your dashboard that has this particular uh, the view that you want to see, just the things you want to see. So let's start over there. Let me go back over to the dashboard and let me edit this dashboard. And I'm going to add a new view to the dashboard and I'm going to, they recommend calling it something like extension. And that's what I'm going to do here. Extension spelled correctly, of course. Uh, no icon, no URL. Now it does say that if you're going to do this, if with a single card, yeah, if you only have one card, activate the panel mode option for a better look. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to make it panel mode just for this particular card. And what that does is it renders the first card at full width of the dashboard. And then other cards in this view and badges are not going to be rendered. That, that way it looks, looks okay in the extension. So I'm going to save it. So now I have a new, a new view in my dashboard. And I'm going to add a card and I'm going to add a, I'm just going to add a, an entity card to play around with. And for that entity card, I'm going to add some items to it, some switches. So some of my, some of my switches that I want to add, and I don't, I'm not going to put a title on this one. It's optional because I want it, all this stuff to show up in the card without extra, extra business on the card. So I'm going to add a few items to this. So some of the switches that I use and we'll call it uh, playroom light. I'll look at another switch here and I'll add another entity to this card here. So I have three lights on my entity card. When you add the URL in here to the extension, it's going to give you a preview of what it looks like. So we're going to put in our URL for our home assistant instance, and I'm going to put this whole thing in here. It's called new dash slash extension, new dash slash extension. Make sure that's spelled right. New dash, new dash, not new underscore. It's going to give you a preview of what you have here. Now you can adjust the width and the height of this to make it look the way you want it to look. And the other, th other thing they recommend doing is getting rid of this uh, header bar, which is typically 56 pixels in height. So if I click on that, now all I have are just the things that I want to display within this box. And I'm going to save it. It's saved now. So I can go to any page I'm on, I want to on here and I can click this box. And now I have the three things that I'm using in this, this, uh, this car or this extension. But what I want to do now is I want to make it look more like this. So I'm going to start building a little bit better dashboard with this. And for that, I'm going to go back over to new dash. I mean, no, so no, no matter what you put here, you're going to have it show up. No matter how you change this, it's going to show up on that extension. I'm going to go ahead and edit the dashboard again, which I'm already there, I guess. And this is the entity card. Now remember it's full width. So it confuses me a little bit because I'm not used to full width cards in panel mode but the edit button is actually down here on the bottom. 
and I'm going to do some stuff like I've done on this main, my main dashboard. So I want to, in fact, let me show you that. I'm going to get out of edit mode here. I'm going to go back to my main dashboard. And I want something along this line here to show up on my dashboard, including these temperatures. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all of this here from this dashboard. So I'm going to edit the dashboard and I'm going to edit this particular card. And I'm going to take just this information all the way down to my temperature. And now we have our outdoor temperature. I'm going to bring it all the way down to this point here and I'm going to copy all of this. Cancel that. I'm going to go back to my extension dashboard here and I'm going to edit the extension dashboard, but I'm going to edit it um, here, but in, in code only mode. So code editor. And I'm going to remove all of this and I'm just going to paste in what I pulled from my other dashboard. And now you can see that this is what's going to show up in that card. Now in panel mode, it, it gets a little wonky because it's full width. Let's see what it looks like here. If I drop this down now, you can see that I have all of, all of this information. So I have all my alarm stuff, uh, some of my gate stuff, uh, various statuses of my doors and locks, a bunch of switches here, so I can still turn switches on and off, and some outside temperatures. So at a glance, no matter what page I'm looking at here, I can pop this down and do, the, do what I need to with it. Now, what I want to do is be able to change it a little bit because... Um, and here's an interesting thing. It deleted my URL. So I'm going to put the URL back in. So I went to options for this particular uh, extension and it rem removed my URL. And what I want to do is I want to adjust the width so I see the whole card. But in addition, what I want to do is I want to adjust the height. Let's see if I can get it to display everything. And there I can. So if I have this height set here, and I have the extension set this way or the width set this way. And I can kind of squeeze it a little bit more if I want to like that and save it. Now, if I go to just any other, other tab and click the extension, now I get the entire thing with one view. And I also need to hide this top bar. So let, let's see if we can get in here without actually. All right. So instead of hitting options, you hit configure. So you can right click on it and you can hit configure, it'll save your stuff. I need to hide the header, then I'm gonna save it now. Now I'm gonna go back over here and drop it down. And here I have everything. Now I do notice that the header must be smaller in my theme than 56 um, pixels because it's cutting just a little bit of the top off. So once again, I'll go back in here to configure and I will change the height of the header and shrink it a little bit till I get exactly what I want. And maybe that's true. I do see a little bit of that bar there. So until that bar goes away, I'll do that. And then of course the height is a little bit higher than it needs to be now because the header is gone. All right, now I'll save it. And now what we have is a working extension that we can pull up and put whatever we want to in it. Some, some tips to keep in mind here. If you have only one card, activate the panel mode, which is what we did. If you want to match your browser's color scheme, you can choose a specific theme just for this view. So that means you would go in here uh, to your new dash and you would edit this and your theme would be something different. Right now there's no theme. and I don't have any themes installed. I'm just using dark mode, but if you had some different themes you wanted to use here, you could do that. Uh, you can completely hide the view if you don't want it to show on your existing dashboard and that won't affect the extension at all. So if I didn't want this up here to show in my dashboard, then I could just hide it and it would not hide, it wouldn't show in here, but it would still show in the extension. Visibility is where you do that. You can select which user should see this view. So if I hide that view from myself and see now it's gone there. So it doesn't show up here anymore, but if you edit it, the dashboard, then you have the ability to see it again. So it's hidden when you don't want it, but it's there if you need to go edit it and do something to it. And what other things do we talk about? Choose a specific URL for the view, the view for example, uh, extension. It's kind of what I did here under my setup here under configure, you can see that I have a new dash extension. And that's just, if you want to figure out where that is, you would get out of edit mode, 
and you would just look and see what this full path is and that's what you would put inside that extension. All right, so that is it for this extension. Uh, this is pretty awesome. It just shows you the ability for a home assistant to be able to do things and to be able to iterate on better and better tools and processes and things you can use with Home Assistant. Let me know what kind of uh, extension dashboard you're using. Show me pictures in my Discord or um, let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions and I will see you on the next video. Oh wait, before you go, I did think of one other thing that I need to talk about. If you're going to be using this uh, remotely outside of your local network, you're going to need to make sure that you have set this Home Assistant or this URL to something that Home Assistant can use uh, remotely. So your Nabucasa address, for example, or DuckDNS or something else. Otherwise, when you leave your home, your home network, it's not going to have access to it because it's trying to look for a local URL or your local IP address. So just want to make sure that was clear so you don't go away from your home network and all of a sudden nothing works. All right. Subscribe if you would like to. Hit that thumbs up. Uh, bell icon thingy and all that jazz and see you next time.